Hello everyone and welcome back. Before I start with the video, I wanted to say a huge thank you for your support until now. I also have some exciting news. So as many of you remember, me and Mortis Media hosted a competition in both of our channels which started on 14th of February and today we are going to announce the two winners who won two exclusive signed prints of the artwork you see now on screen. We randomly chose two of you and the winners are Harrison Thornton, Ryan Flannery. Congratulations, you will be notified via the YouTube message system so we can discuss about the details. Now, this video is again a great collaboration with Mortis Media and the second part of our competition in which one of you will win the original painting that you will see me paint in this video. For more information, wait till the end of the video. So grab your flashlight and follow us into the darkness. This was when I was fresh out of high school, and my first job. I worked as a machine operator for a factory, doing graveyard shift. It was only me on the floor, and the supervisor in the office. It was always a two-man shift. Sometimes, he comes out to help bring me stock materials from the back storage. The back storage was haunted. Also, I was told by the previous shift workers that I replaced. I'm not superstitious, and was sceptical about it. For the first week, nothing unnatural happened, and it was reinforcing my scepticism. However, as weeks go by, I started to notice that the machines closest to the storage room entrance would turn on by themselves randomly. Also, I started to hear people talking in the back storage, and it seemed like they were making noise, doing some restocking. But when I would go there to investigate, the lights would be off, and it would be dead quiet. Then, this one time, my supervisor just finished helping me and said he'd be in the office if I needed him. About 20 minutes passed, when a big crashing noise from the back storage scared the shit out of me. I called him to make sure that it was not him either pranking me or crashing the forklift in the back. He came out from the office and was asking me what the hell happened. I then freaked out, and we both decided to check it out. Once again, the back storage light is off and eerily quiet. We turned on the light, and we saw barrels toppled over, and a broken crate with stock materials all over the ground. These crates are on a shelf about five feet off the ground, and the barrels are full. We cleaned it up, and he used a forklift to put the replacement crate with the materials on it back up the shelf and I rolled and repositioned three toppled barrels back to the corner by the entrance. By the time we were done, it was lunch break. He went out to get food, and I was alone operating the machines again in this big factory the size of two football fields. I wasn't troubled or scared, knowing that he would not be back for at least another half hour. But I ended up shutting down the machines, and waited for him outside. When he was back, he was surprised, and I told him to go back to my station and to tell me what he sees. Yup, there's one of the barrels that I propped on its side by the machine I was at. I told him that I didn't hear the barrel fall like earlier, or even the sound of a full barrel rolling and stopping by my side. Standing in front of the barrel, gives you a good view of the dark entrance to the storage. It was also then I heard a faint creepy female voice coming from there, which is why I was waiting for him outside. 
we ended up closing the factory for the remainder of the night and explained the situation to my manager the next day. My manager thought I made this up and did so in order to leave early. The security camera, however, verified that the barrel just rolled out itself from the dark storage area and stopped where I was. And you can see me coming into view to check where this barrel came from and hurried back, tracking to turn off the machines. This prompted management to abolish graveyard shift and I eventually quit that job. Number two. Okay, so a little backstory before I tell you this. I am a six foot seven male in Australia, and I'd like to think I'm fairly tough and intimidating guy, but some of the shit that used to go on at the mall I used to work the night shift for still gives me goosebumps to this day. So the mall I worked for was very large, probably the largest in my state, I'd say, and all the way up to about 8.30pm, it would still be quite busy. It was only around 9.30 when we managed to usher all the strangers out, and by 11 was when all the business owners are the only ones left. My job was basically to patrol the mall and make sure there was no one sticking around after the doors were closed. During the night, we didn't have guns or batten, only a kind of maze that was never used. There were multiple occasions where we would find would-be thieves hiding around trying to break into shops after dark, but they were normally photoed numbered by the four or five of us, shift guys at a time, and they would usually be intimidated by me or some of the other imposing members of security. Things started getting really weird for me on the night shift. I'd say it was about two o'clock in the morning one night, and I was standing in the middle of the empty food court, eating a sandwich. This was the only part of the mall that had any natural light at night time due to the skylight, so it was comfortable to eat there. While I was eating one night, I heard of this scraping noise from the hallway leading off in the main food courts and all around some of the toilets. It's sort of like a piece of metal dragging across the floor and I was immediately put on edge so I flicked on my flashlight without a moment of hesitation, and I can remember creeping down the hallway with my flashlight in hand, casting a beam of light about six or seven feet in front of me. As I got closer and closer to the end of the hallway, the noise became louder and louder until I was at the end of the hallway. There was only the toilet doors to the left and to the right of me, I could tell the sound was coming from the female toilets though. I gripped the handle and opened the door, a tiny crack. The noise was not very clear and had me not so much scared, but definitely confused. I yelled, All right, who's in there? The noise quickly stopped and I paused for a moment, listening hard to the tiny crack of the door and I swear to fucking God, I could hear breathing. Low male breathing. I shut the door, still gripping the handle tightly, and flipped on my radio. This is 1-3, and I need help in food court bathrooms. I think someone's here. No response. This was really strange, and it put me further on edge. Policy was to always answer the radio, and now, I was truly becoming quite alarmed. I said, this is 1-3, does anyone copy? Still no response. I can remember whispering to myself, what the actual fuck? 
I then opened the door a tiny crack and said, "Listen, mate," I said, sounding as imitating as possible. If you don't fucking come out with your hands up, you're going to end up eating your teeth tonight. Do you want that? I sat there at the door, quite honestly terrified at this point, but there was no response. In fact, now there was no noise at all. I opened the door again and said into the bathroom, "Okay, mate, I'm coming in." So do anything stupid, and it's not my fault you'll never walk again. I tried my hardest to sound scary, but my voice was quivering at this point. This whole situation made no sense at all. Why would someone be in the female bathrooms? What the fuck is even going on here? I very slowly opened the door and scanned my flashlight slowly across the room. All the cubicles were open, which was weird. But other than that, the whole room was totally empty. I was totally shitting myself about now. I was definitely losing it. I walked into the center of the bathroom, closing the door behind me, scared to the core. I thought I might faint. This is some horror movie shit. Come out. Then I heard the long whining squeak of the door behind me, and I spun around, basically crying at this point, and shining my torch on this fucking massive man, who was at least a head taller than me, or so it seemed to my state at the time. He was Caucasian, at least in his forties, with long grey hair. He was beginning to open the door, but he stopped. Dead still, in the middle of his action, he just looked at me, smiling this weird, guilty fucking smile, like a kid would make when he gets caught stealing biscuits or some shit like that. I'm not going to lie, I was so scared I froze. He lifted his finger up to his mouth, before swinging the door open all the way, and sprinting out. With what looked like some small metal box, turns out he was just behind the toilet door when I was opening it, and I totally missed him. I was so fucking close to him, and I didn't even fucking notice him. He could have killed me if he had a knife or something, and the thought still haunts me to this day. Later that night, my radio miraculously started working again. And I got right on to telling my coworkers about my story. They collectively went pale when I told them what happened. They all had similar stories, but none that were as much of a close shave as mine. I worked the night shift for another week after that before I quit. I am not sticking around for more of that shit. My story is definitely not poop your pants scary or anything. Or involving anything supernatural like that, but it was left to me shaken and very uneasy about working late shifts, ever again. Number three. Working night shift at a care home. Only two people work at night. We get everyone to bed and tidy up, then sit down to watch TV, and answer if any of the residents ring the bell. At around two in the morning, the doorbell rings, and this is weird as the home is in the countryside, and around ten miles from the nearest village. We go to investigate, and find a man at the front door. He asks if he can use the phone, as his car's broken down, and he isn't allowed in, but we offer to phone a tow truck for him. He agrees, and we go get the phone. And when he comes back to the door, he's gone. Weird, but we think maybe he'd just gone back to his car or something. We go back and sit down, but can see down the corridor that the man is now inside, standing in the TV room. He doesn't see us, so we run and hide. 
We still have the phone, so we call the police, but they take a while to get to us. Around 15 minutes later, the cops show up. We let them in, and they search the place and calm us down. The man isn't found anywhere, and we call management and send some more staff out there to stay with us during the night. The manager arrives, and the police leave. We're back watching TV and chattering. We're a bit calmer now, when we hear the front door open and close. We go to investigate, start calling the cops again, and look out the window to see the man running away down the driveway. He'd been in the home the entire time the cops were there. We have no idea what he wanted, and I'm very glad I don't work there anymore. Night shifts are creepy enough in a care home without intruders. Number 4 Right out of college, a good job as a nanny for two elementary aged girls. For their anniversary, the parents went on a week-long cruise and I stayed home with the kids. The first few nights, the eight-year-old would come into my room multiple times at night and wake me up. It was obvious she hadn't pre-planned what she was going to give me as a reason for waking me up, so she would stumble through an excuse on the spot, like, I just wanted to make sure we are still going to the park tomorrow, or, I think I forgot to brush my teeth and wonder if I should do it now or wait till the morning. I figured she was just missing her parents and feeling out of sorts, so I let it slide at first. But by the fourth or fifth time, knowing I needed to sleep to keep up with two active kids, I told her that she wasn't to wake me up unless that it was an emergency. I get a couple more hours of undisturbed sleep, but wake up with a weird feeling around 5 a.m. I turned over and nearly pissed myself. The girl had brought over a chair right next to the bed and is staring down at me. It didn't help that she had long dark hair and this happened a few months after the ring came out. Her explanation? I just thought it would be fun to watch you sleep. I didn't wake you. Number 5 I work on the maintenance team in a large foundry base. It was a normal non-production night in our eyes for me and one other guy. We had heard a few knocks and bangs, but with the compressors being turned off, things drop and bang as the compressed air slowly drops due to leaks. Anyway, we went about our night, and the firm was robbed whilst we were there that night, and we had no idea. We watched the CCTV back, and at one point, a man was standing with a metal bar behind me, whilst another stood on a girder right above the other guy's head with a crowbar, in case we heard anything. So, it's a good thing we didn't hear anything really. You can't imagine how creepy it was watching it back, realising how close you were to very serious danger. Number 6 I work as a transporter in a hospital. About two years ago, we moved from the old city hospital into a new state of the art facility. The old hospital was built in the 1930s and it was showing its age. At night was just plain creepy. Each floor had an east and west wing. The east wing of the fourth floor was the first wing to be shut down about two weeks before the move. One night at around 9.30, I'm up on the floor to get a patient from the west wing. I see a small group of nurses and aides who all used to work on the now closed east wing. They looked visibly shaken. I walked over to see if everything was okay. They told me that they had decided to walk through the old wing for nostalgia's sake. When they were over there, 
the phone of the nurses' station started ringing. The computers and phones had not yet been moved. Not sure what to do, one of the nurses reached over the counter and answered the phone. The nurse told me there was a woman's voice on the other end, and that she sounded confused. This is the conversation as best I can remember it. This is hospital. How can I help you? Asked the nurse. Hello, who is this? I am a nurse. Is there anything I can help you with? Where am I? This is a hospital. Are you patient here? Oh, okay. Then the line went dead. That's when the nurse finally looked at the screen of the phone to see where the call was coming from. The phone gave the room number directly next to the nurse's station. The rooms by this point had all been cleared out and the phones removed. They could see directly into the room and see that there was nobody in there. That's when they bolted towards the west wing where I was getting off the elevator. I avoided that wing for the rest of my time there. Hey there and thank you so much for listening. I want to extend a huge thank you to Mortis Media for helping me with this video. Also, we are hosting a second competition in both channels and this time, one of you will win the original painting you see now on screen. The only thing you have to do is to subscribe in both channels, mine and Mortis Media, like and comment this video and the video on Mortis Media's channel which you see now on screen. Simple as that. Make sure you don't miss the opportunity. Take care and I will see you all in my next video.